Hello everyone, Volkswagen is making some major changes to its lineup for 2024. Last week we got our eyes on the Euromarket Passat, which goes wagon only in its latest incarnation, and this week we've got all the details on the new Tiguan. And the Tiguan story goes beyond the third generation SUV's curvy new clothes. Because, like the Passat, the Tiguan you see here in these pictures is only for the European market where it directly replaces Europe's outgoing standard wheelbase, two-row Tiguan. It won't be going to the US, which only took the longer Tiguan that had the option of three-row seating and was also sold in Europe as the seven-seat Tiguan Allspace. Instead, North America will get a slightly larger and entirely different SUV based on the next generation of the Chinese market Volkswagen Tehran, and European buyers who can't live without that third row will also be offered the same thing. Now that's cleared up. Let's take a look at the new Tiguan. We've already touched on the newfound curves, which give the car a warmer, more organic look, not to mention a more muscular stance that brings it closer to the bigger Touareg, thanks to flared rear fenders and a pinched waistline. It doesn't move much closer to its big brother in terms of size, though. The new Tiguan switches to Volkswagen's modern MQB Evo platform, as used by the Golf, Passat, and Audi A3. But the 2,681 mm, 105.5 inches wheelbase is virtually identical. Volkswagen Tiguan does at least promise a little, 10 mm, 0.4 inches, extra rear legroom, and says the 648 liter, 22.9 QF trunk is up by 33 liters, 1.2 cubic foot. There's a new light bar stretching across the rear of the car, and another one at the front, where it forms a grill that is narrowed to the point that the VW roundel spills over it, top and bottom, just like on the MK8 Golf. The lower grille features three horizontal chrome bars on regular Tiguans, see pics of the green car at bottom of the article, but sporty R-Line models, red car, get a diamond pattern mesh, an even angrier mouth and black arch trims. The interior has had an equally major rethink. The current model's mid-2010S dashboard layout with its in-console infotainment system was logical and intuitive, but it was also looking ancient so Volkswagen has junked the lot for a new dash with a huge tablet touchscreen that features configurable menu bars at the top and bottom of the screen to make up for the fact that there are no hard keys. It's the same kit we've already seen on both the new Passat and its electric ID. Seven Cousin, and like those cars, the Tiguan also gets physical, rather than touch-sensitive steering wheel buttons, backlit temperature sliders, and a gear shifter on the right-hand stock that frees up console space for phones, wallets, and the handsome new rotary controller with inbuilt screen for the media system. If the big interior news is the new touchscreen, the headline act under the hood is the available PHEV hardware that can deliver a solid 62 miles, 100 kilometers of electric range, thanks to a battery that's almost doubled in size to 19.7 kilometers per hour. Fortunately, the charging speed has also grown from 26 to 11 kilowatts for AC top-ups, while DC charging is possible for the first time Though the sluggish 50 kilowatts max means it takes 25 mines to fill from 10, 80 percent. The same as some real EVs with five times the range. There are in fact two PHEVs, both driving the front wheels through an eight-speed DCT and powered by a combination of 1.5-liter turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engines and 114 horsepower, 85 kilowatts, 115 PS electric motors. But thanks to different ice tunes, one gives an overall system output of 201 horsepower, 204 PS, while the other serves up a more substantial 268 horsepower, 272 PS. A 2-liter diesel and another pair of petrol 1.5S, this time mild hybrids, are available for drivers who don't need to drive meaningful distances on electric power, but still care about economy. The ETSE engines feature variable geometry turbos, cylinder deactivation, and 15 kilowatts, 20 horsepower, 20 PS, of 48 volt assistance, giving total outputs of 129 horsepower, 130 PS, and 148 horsepower, 150 PS. And like the PHEVs drive the front wheels, though this time through seven speed dual clutch transmissions. Buyers determined to equip their Tiguans with all wheel drive, meanwhile, miss out on the efficient little 1.5 liter engines and instead get the tried and tested EA8882 liter petrol motors seen in Volkswagens such as the Golf GTI. Again, there are two tunes, one with 201 horsepower, 150 kilowatts, and another with 262 horsepower, 265 PS. Volkswagen says the AWD car's four-motion hardware has been modified to reduce vibrations, 
and both the FWD and AWD Tiguans can be optioned with a version of the new DCC Pro Adaptive Damper setup already seen in the Passat. The system features two valve shocks for more comfort and control, and drivers can adjust their operating range using the in-dash vehicle dynamics manager drive mode selector you'll have seen before in the Golf. The Tiguan goes on sale early next year in Europe, and we'd expect a base price of around 32,000 pounds, 35,000 euros, 37,000 dollars. But we may have to wait until close to that delivery time to find out what North America's replacement for the current Tiguan looks like. Would you buy the new Euro Tiguan over a Toyota RAV4 or Honda CRV? I will be waiting for it in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel not to miss the latest news from the world of automobiles. See you soon. Goodbye, everyone.